Those of you with an eye for signature Grand Seiko design will recognize this group of complete watches and carcasses as examples of 61 series Grand Seikos that were produced between about 1967 and the early to mid 1970s. These are all examples of the 61 series which were powered by high beat variants of the 61 series. This collection provides the basis I think for three imminent and future projects as well as the carcasses of two or three projects past. And so to set some sort of context I think what I'll do is just to go through each of these uh, to tell you a little about the history, when I bought them, why I bought them before providing an introduction to the project I'm hoping to make a start on later today in fact. Let's start with um, this one here. This is, in fact those of you who have a keen sense of what's correct will note that the dial and hands for this watch don't belong in this case. This case is, a, is again a 6146-8000. In fact I bought this watch to provide the movement that I used in the high beat 6105-8000 project that I mentioned in the last uh, YouTube video. In fact you can see the dial for that watch here. You can, uh, clearly this is unsalvageable at least from my point of view. So this watch was a, essentially a parts donor. I bought it cheaply to, at the time in which you, when you could still buy relatively cheap vintage Grand Seikos simply to provide the movement for that high beat Grand Seiko diver project. The innards that we see here, these actually come from a 6146-8050, which those of you who are familiar with my blog will recognize as in fact the only uh, high, 61 series high beat Grand Seiko watch that I've uh, worked on and described on the blog. This dial handset, however, are not those that you see featured in the blog. These belong to this case, which I bought to provide case parts for the project, the, for the 8050 project that um, I described in the blog. So why do I have an empty 8050 case that seems perfectly suitable to house the dial hand and movement that we see present in this watch? Well, the answer to that question lies in uh, a misjudgment I made in deciding to send this case out to be refinished at, by a third party watchmaker. Um, and the problem I have is that the refinishing in my view has effectively written this case off. It might look superficially quite nice here but the original finishing in particular to the lug the uh, the lugs of this watch I think has essentially destroyed this case as a, as a usable candidate to house um, a project. I, I would never be able to live with this. I say it's a write-off, um, that's not strictly true. I, I did make some inquiries with um, quite a, a celebrated watch refinisher called The Lapinist, um, who I think is based in Poland. Uh, and he does absolutely superb work, but of course that comes at a cost, and I don't believe the investment that would be necessary to get this case back up to snuff is actually worth it, given the condition of the dial and hands of the, of the um, original watch. However, if, I, if we now discount this case, we discard it from consideration and just set it to one side, then we're left with this as a potential sort of modded Grand Seiko where we combine the innards of a 6146-8050 from the early 1970s with a case for a 6146-8000 from about 1969. That's a fine idea in principle. 
In practice, this particular example throws up uh, a bit of a snag, and we can see what that might be if we take the case back off. You can see that the movement itself is a bit tarnished, but that's okay. We, I'm sure there are ways around that. You'll notice I've actually released the crown. If we take the crown out, we can see that the case is missing its crown tube. In fact, when I first removed the crown of this watch, I, of course, I noticed the crown tube was missing. I wonder where it was, and it was actually captured within the the crown of the of the watch. So. As things stand at the moment, this also is a non-starter. I'd need either to uh, somehow refit a crown tube before this would be a viable project, or find another case. So this is a watch with potential, but at the moment it's stalled because we can't really move forward without uh, a crown tube. So let's set this one to one side. And so we come to the central piece of the jigsaw, a 61468000 from 1969, a crosshair dial. This looks in pretty good nick. The problem with this watch, and the reason why I was able to get it so cheaply, is that the gold medallion is missing from the case back. For some reason, this has actually a disproportionately large effect on the values of these watches. Um, but doesn't detract at all from the fact that these are really beautiful uh, watches and of course the case back is typically uh, facing down on the top of your wrist so it's not something you, you generally concern yourself when you're wearing the watch but nevertheless for collectors this has a big impact on values. So when I bought this watch the plan was to either hold out and hope that I'd be able to find a relatively cheap case back on its own, complete with the original medallion, or to use a display case back. In this case, I've held out for the former. I wanted to see if I could find uh, a, either a case back or a spare case. Uh, but of course, this weight has been through this period of massive inflationary growth in the values of vintage watches. and the prospect of finding a relatively cheap gold medallion case back or indeed case uh, seems to have receded increasingly as time has passed. However, just uh, about three months ago I came across an auction on Yahoo Japan for this. And what we have here is a 6146, 8000, from 1968. This is actually a bit older than the watch that I'm hoping to use this case with. You can see that the case back has is in excellent condition, as is the case. There are a few little nibbles on the case, but basically it's, very, it's probably sharper than the case, than, than this case. You can see this one has rather slightly softened edges around the regions of the, of the lugs, but the this case doesn't have any conspicuous nibbles, whereas the donor case looks sharper, the brushing is sharper, the edges are sharper, but there are one or two little, you can see there, one or two little nibbles. So I'm not yet sure whether I'll just use this case wholesale or just take the case back and use it in the original case for, for this watch. The reason I was able to buy this, I mean I, I didn't get this bargain bucket, but certainly it was cheap enough to to worth to be worth putting in a, a bid and, and I think the reason I was able to secure this watch is clearly because the, the bezel is missing. But that for me is not an issue because I have a bezel already fitted to the watch I'm hoping to, to salvage and in fact in any case I managed a few years ago to find a new old stock bezel and so 
I have a number of options uh, available to me to, to um, work my way through this particular project. So what's the plan then? Well, uh, this case is clearly going to donate its case back to, let's put that over here, this case back is going to find its way partnered with this watch and I will either keep this case with this watch or use this case with this watch and whichever of the cases I don't use I'll then use to at some point in the future to revive this one to make my modified Grand Seiko 61 series project. The watch that you saw right at the start of this that I've not yet talked about uh, is a, a project probably I'll get to in a, in a, a few months, I'm not sure exactly, but um, provides us with a kind of reference point to this whole series of watches and that is this one here. This is a Again, a 61468000. Let's take a look at the case back. The, you can, you'll notice the medallion is a little sh smaller. This is the original style gold medallion that was used in the first um, production run of these watches. You'll see that the serial number here starts with a 7 and a 0, indicating that this, is, this was produced in October 1967. So this is one of the very oldest 6146 or the 61. GS series of, of watches and you'll notice also that the that the dial although I've got the time set to a rather inconvenient point here yes you'll notice that the dial on this watch has the GS Grand Seiko logo below the center point of the dial um, using the same script that was used in the later versions of the original um, manual wind Grand Seiko self-data. If you look again at the later watch that I'm going to start working on hopefully today uh, is that the Grand Seiko branding has actually disappeared altogether, the only remnant being a GS sitting above the words high beat below the center point of the dial. Let's take a closer look at the immediate object of the exercise, which is this 61468000. We take a close look at the dial, we see that it's blemish free, the marker is in nice condition, there's no obvious signs of corrosion. The uh, hands are original. Seiko logo is, I think maybe there's a sign, it's, I don't know if it's slightly bent up on the right hand side, I'm not sure. Um, case itself looks very nice indeed, it's just got a slight softening as I said before to its lines but nothing really to object to. This hasn't been abused, it's just been worn. original crown, the GS logo in the center, and then of course this case back missing its gold medallion. One of the potential deal breakers that can afflict these watches is that the barrels are sealed and if the mainspring breaks or if the mainspring is performing subpar then there's no obvious means of replacing the mainsprings. You can't buy uh, replacement mainsprings on their own. The sealed complete mainspring barrel that you would previously have been able to buy as a spare are no longer available either. And so one of the things you need to establish right from the start is whether or not the, the watch actually runs in any sense. Uh, can try winding a little bit of power. Just set the time, see if it. Yeah, there we go. So let's just put that back down. You can see this watch is running, which means that, well, at least at the very least, the, the mainspring is not broken. Um, 
and so there's potential life in this old dog yet. And so I think that's about where we're going to leave it for now. Um, at some point in the next couple of weeks, with a bit of luck, uh, these two watches will become one. Quite how I'm going to achieve that, I'm not yet sure, but we'll get there. Um, and so I'll wrap this up now. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to the next project. Uh, you know what to do, what the routine is on YouTube videos. If you, if you want to see more in the future, then do the usual like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll see you soon. Thanks very much.